So one important concept from 7.4 of the text is this idea of finding powers of complex numbers. So here we have the following example. We've been asked to find negative 1 plus i cubed. And so since we understand uh, complex multiplication of complex numbers, this just means negative 1 plus i multiplied by itself three times. And so we can write that out, and then we can just perform the multiplication. So let's say we have... Uh, we're just going to do it piece by piece. So I'll start by multiplying the product of negative 1 plus i times itself. So that's going to give me negative 1 times negative 1. And all I'm doing here is foiling. So now I'm on my inner terms and now my last two terms, i squared. And then all of this is going to still be times negative 1 plus i. And I'll do that later. So let me simplify what I have in these brackets. I'll get 1 minus i minus i, and then remember, i squared, this term here, is equal to negative 1. So I'll get a minus 1 there. So I'm going to keep cleaning up these the terms inside this bracket. So I'm going to get uh, the 1 and the minus 1 will cancel, so I'll just get a negative 2i times negative 1 plus i. And then to finish this, I'm just going to distribute. And so I'm going to get negative 2i times negative 1 plus negative 2i times i. Finally, I'm going to get a positive 2i, and then I'm going to get minus 2i squared. We know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this is going to give me 2 plus 2i. Whew. Okay, so that took quite some time. So what if instead I was asked to find negative 1 plus i to the 6th? I would have to multiply this by itself six times. Um, I don't think so. There's got to be a better way. And so that's what kind of motivates this following formula. So let's say we just have some arbitrary complex number, z equals x plus yi. So if we are um, you know, writing this in polar form, if we just have z to the first power, we get that's equal to x plus yi. Or in polar form, that's equal to r e to the i theta. Now, if we're doing z squared, this is going to be equal to x plus y i squared, uh, or we could just do r e to the i theta squared. And if we actually multiply that, uh, we distribute the squared using our rule of exponents to get r squared times e to the 2 i theta, or 2 theta i. Probably be a better way to write it. Now let's do it again. We've got uh, z cubed is going to be r to the i theta cubed. So we get that's equal to r cubed e to the 3 theta i. And then lastly, if we do r e to the i theta to the fourth, that's equal to r to the fourth e to the 4 theta i. So I'm sensing a pattern here. Um, and so if we're looking at the following examples, you know, when we squared z, we got r squared e to the 2 theta i. When we took z to the fourth power, we got r to the fourth e to the 4 theta i. So in general, what can we say about z to the n? What can we say about a complex number that's been raised to the power n? And so that leads us to the following theorem called de Moivre's theorem. Uh, de Moivre is French. And so if we have a complex number, uh, if we raise z to the n, then in polar form, you know, that's going to look like r to the e i theta to the n. And that's just going to be given by r to the n e to the n theta i. And so this formula is called de Moivre's theorem. And we can use it to find the powers of complex numbers. So let's go back to our original example that we decided not to multiply out, negative 1 plus i to the 6th. So here we want to find uh, z to the 6th, where z is negative 1 plus i, and we want to write that answer in polar and rectangular form. So there's two steps to this. First, we need to convert this to polar form so we can use de Moivre's theorem. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and plot it. So we've got negative 1 plus i, so we're going to go over negative 1 and then up 1 on the imaginary axis, real axis. And so our point z is going to be right here. And we're trying to find r and theta. So to do that, you know, let's draw... Uh, kind of a diagonal here. And so the r that we're looking for is going to represent this distance. We call that the modulus 
okay? And the theta is going to be this angle created here. So um, let's see. We see that r is squared is equal to negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to 2. So we get that r is equal to square root of 2. Now let's see. Now we want to find our angle theta. Um, so we know that the tangent of theta is equal to negative 1 over 1. Actually, other way around is equal to 1 over negative 1. And so we get negative 1. And so we're looking at uh, a negative 45 degrees. Um, that's going to be in our fourth quadrant. We want an angle uh, in this second quadrant. So we're going to have that theta is equal to 135 degrees. Or theta equals um, 3 pi over 4. So this says that z is going to equal 2, excuse me, root 2, e to the 3 pi over 4 i. So our theta is 3 pi over 4. So this is how we write this number in polar form. So now let's use this polar form um, to use DeMauw's theorem. So we've got z to the 6 is the same thing as root 2 e to the 3 pi over 4 i to the 6th. And DeMauw's theorem tells us that we just raise our r to the 6th power and multiply that by e to the 3 pi over 4 i to the 6th power. So raising root 2 to the 6th power, that's root 2 three times, I mean six times. If we think about it in pairs, each pair is going to undo the radical, and we've got three of those pairs, so it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 for 8. And now we want to multiply that by um, e to the 3 power over 4 to i to the 6th. So that's going to be e to the 18 pi over 4 i. And let's simplify that. That's going to give us 8 e to the 9 pi over 2 i. Whoops, this i is an exponent. And so this is going to be um, our answer in polar form. So that's not too bad. So this is polar form of z to the 6. So let's write this in rectangular form as well. So to do that, uh, recall Euler's formula. which says that e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And so we're going to use this uh, to keep going. So we've got z to the 6 equals 8 e to the 9 pi over 2 i. So we're going to take this part and we're going to rewrite it using Euler's formula. So this is going to become cosine of 9 pi over 2 plus i sine of 9 pi over 2. So if I simplify this, I'm going to get 8. The cosine of 9 pi over 2, if you're having a little bit of difficulty seeing what that would be, you can draw small little reference uh, plane. And so let's see, for 9 pi over 2, if this is pi over 2, uh, if we go around once, that's going to be um, 2 pi. And so right here, that's going to be 5 pi over 2. And if we go back around again, we'll be at 9 pi over 2. So here, we're actually at this point. So that's just, we can use pi over 2 as a reference angle. So the cosine there is 0. And the sine is 1. So we're going to get 8 times 0 plus i. So this is just going to be 8i. And this will be our answer in rectangular form. So this is the answer in the form x plus yi, where x is 0 and y is 8.
Let's do one more example. So here we've got z equals root 3 plus i, and we want to find z to the ninth in polar rectangular form. So once again, we want to start off by converting our given complex number in rectangular form to polar form. So if we do that, uh, square root of 3 uh, from the point, 1.7321. So that's going to be, you know, kind of right here. And if we go up i, we're going to be right here. So this is going to be our z. We're in the first quadrant, so that makes things simpler angle-wise. And we just want to kind of figure out uh, what our r is and what theta is. So this is r. Once again, r is also called the modulus when we're dealing with complex numbers. So to find r, we have r squared equals the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared. It's going to be 3 plus 1, which is 4. So that means that r is going to equal 2. Now in terms of theta, we have that the tangent of theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. And so that tells us that theta itself is going to be equal to 30 degrees. So this tells us that in polar form, our z equals 2r to the, oh, excuse me, we already wrote r, 2 e to the uh, pi over 6 i. And then, you know, you'll also see this in the book. It's the same thing as e to the 30 degrees i. So you can write it either way. So uh, let's see. So now we want to use De Moivre's theorem to find z to the ninth. So we have z to the ninth is going to equal 2 e to the 30 degrees i to the ninth. So what we do is we uh, raise 2 to the ninth and e to the 30i, 30, 30 degrees i to the ninth. Now when we raise 2 to the ninth, we get 512. And then here we get e to 270 degrees i. So this is going to be our answer in polar form. Now we just want to write this in rectangular form and then we'll be done. So to use rectangular form, we use Euler's formula again. And that tells us that e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So if we use this, we get the following. We have that z to the ninth is equal to 512 e to 270 degrees i in polar form. So now we can rewrite this as e to the 270 degrees i. We can write that as cosine of 270 degrees plus i sine of 270 degrees. Simplifying that, we get 512 cosine of 270 degrees. We're down at 3 pi over 2. That's just going to be 0. And then the sine there is going to be negative 1. So i times negative 1. So this is going to give us 512 times a negative i. So it's going to be negative 512 i. And this is going to be our answer in, rect in rectangular form.